Good morning and thanks so much for tuning in. Happy Monday to you. This is uh, going to be, uh, to say the least, quite a volatile week for the global markets as a whole. And that's because of what's happening in the US. As you know, the US presidential elections happening this week on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, and also the Fed meeting that will take place. But let's draw our attention to a few stocks that are closer to home. And uh, I'm going to get to them in just a short while. Let me introduce my guest to you. This is Talks to Watch, by the way, on Bloomberg Quint, and I'm Alex Matthew. My guest today is Avinash Kurakshakar of Profit Mart Security. Thanks so much, Avinash, for joining me this morning. I want to talk to you about the ICICI Bank results first. They came out over the weekend, and they were significantly better than expected. At least all the headline numbers seem to indicate that. The net profit, in fact, rising as much as six times to 4,231 crore on the back of quite a strong growth in net interest income, 16% gains in the second quarter when at a time when I think it was not completely open, right? You had several places that were still opening up from the lockdowns and there's also an improvement in the asset quality. So overall, what is your opinion of this bank? There's also commentary that they are quite well provisioned against possible losses on account of the pandemic. So uh, do you think that they are strong results and how do you rate uh, ICICI Bank? Uh, good morning, Alex. I think numbers you know, which came on the weekend for ICICI Bank have been much better than what the uh, street expected. And I think uh, very clearly on both the NIA front as well as on the profit after tax front, the numbers have pleasantly surprised the markets. In fact, uh, collection efficiency has been almost 97% and provisions, you know, in the second quarter have been lower. I think the bank is confident that, uh, you know, the COVID provisions are more than adequate. And that is why compared to Q1, Q2 provisions have been on the lower side. But I think clearly, you know, from the uh, trajectory of the management, uh, you know, co you know, commentary, I think it was very clear that the uh, uh, you know management expects a decent second half and most importantly you know demand is improving the third quarter is going to be another important quarter for them because it's going to be a festival quarter i would believe that you know with these numbers the stock should open on a positive note today and clearly uh, with the kind of trajectory seen in quarter two numbers i would not be surprised alex that we could see a decent re-rating here in fact the stock could obviously you know get uh, re-rated to something like around 505 to 510 odd levels over the next say 8 to 12 months so I think it's a decent kind of bet even at the current price. And our sense is that this kind of performance in the light of the COVID pandemic has been much better than uh, even our expectations. So net net, it's a good set of numbers. Overall asset quality, loan book growth and the NI growth all indicates that you know normalcy is coming back again. And the second half should definitely be better than the first half. So net net, it's a very good performance and much better than what the street expected. Okay, so it's really a buy from your uh, point of view. I want to talk about UPL, and UPL also came out with uh, with uh, numbers. You had a revenue growth of fourteen percent that was registered, and uh, net profit grew uh, nearly three times to four hundred and sixty three crores. But that's still lower than the consensus estimates from what we saw at five hundred and thirty seven. Margins came in stronger, slightly stronger than uh, the uh, the previous figure, but again lower than expected at twenty point two percent. So. At least um, optically, Avinash, not as uh, good as perhaps the street was expecting. So uh, uh, what is your view of uh, the details uh, and the numbers? And would you buy into UPL at this point? Uh, I think, Alex, uh, uh, definitely these numbers uh, appear a little disappointing, but you have to see some extraordinary provisions, you know, which the company made in this quarter. Uh, there was an extraordinary provision of almost 200 crores. So I think clearly from an operational perspective, you know, the EBITDA has moved up as per uh, our expectations. And I think uh, from the management commentary, it was quite visible that uh, the management is very hopeful that further debt reduction would come, uh, you know, further. And most importantly, working capital could be significantly lower. So these uh, are definitely positive kind of, uh, you know, tailwinds for the stock. And the stock has corrected significantly, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the last three to four weeks. So I would believe that, you know, typically if one were to take the next eight to 12 months call, uh, you know, stocks within the rural basket have been done exceedingly well. And I think United Phosphorus has a very well diversified business model, not only having operations in India, but even in Europe. So our sense is that this could definitely be a decent bet, you know, considering the medium to long term time perspective. So, yes, I think it's definitely a buy on declines. And if the market, uh, you know, is not happy with these results and if you see any correction, it would be a good opportunity to accumulate the stock at the current levels. I would believe that the numbers for the third and the fourth quarter could be significantly better than the first. 
You know, this you know, the talk that I've picked, that is DLF, I've picked it more to get your sense of the real estate space because uh, more and more, Avinash, we're hearing uh, this anecdotal evidence of people saying perhaps it's a good time to go and buy property because of the interest rates on home loans being so low. But let's take a look at DLF numbers as well. Revenue lower by 6% at 1,600 and just under 1,610. Net profit falling uh, nearly 50% to 232 crore. but uh, there is an improvement in margins. Margins came in at 28.8% compared with 20.4%. And apparently, uh, there is uh, an exceptional loss of 96 crore rupees during the quarter and an exceptional gain of 143, 144 crore in the base quarter. So there is uh, somewhat uh, of an impact in the earnings on that front. But overall, how would you rate the numbers for DLF? And Considering this likely interest of uh, individuals to buy property in the residential space, would you say that is the place to watch in the real estate space now? Uh, I think, Alex, first of all, you know, my view on the numbers is that these numbers are not uh, anything great because if you remove the exceptionals, I think a decent amount of uh, profit has come from these exceptional kind of items in this mm. quarter. As far as, uh, you know, I think the stock movement is concerned, I would believe that it would be largely negative to neutral in the very near term because markets would definitely not uh, be very positive on DLF because its property portfolio largely consists of the luxury and the upper end kind of segments. And what is actually happening in the market now is that we have been seeing that you know uh, property players which are in the affordable and the middle segment have done exceedingly well you know examples like soba developers or suntech reality or godrej property i would believe that you know the, these companies have shown very strong numbers in terms of inventory sales in terms of profitability and i think the clear view is that you know affordable segment and the middle segment is going to grow faster than the luxury segment so i would believe that you know in the uh, property space if at all one has to take a call i would be more comfortable on companies like godrej properties or soba developers maybe a santec or even a prestige estates you know which is based in bangalore and where mm. numbers have been much better than what the street expected and yes you're right people are definitely buying houses especially in the affordable segment so i think this is a positive development for such builders but yes in the luxury space and in the highly expensive uh, property space i think we could have to wait for maybe another one or two quarters before we see some recovery sign but net net i think the full recovery will be seen in fy22 fy21 would still be a challenging year considering that you know the covid pandemic is still going on and recovery is going to take some time avinash very quickly very second answer perhaps uh, we might see a lot of volatility this week. So if you see a major crack, uh, would you be buying aggressively? Uh, in fact, Alex, uh, this week is going to be extremely volatile. As you rightly mentioned, we have the US elections and then the final result is going to come out. So if at all the market corrects significantly and mirrors the Dow, which is going to be extremely volatile, then I think you know if the market probably corrects significantly to around 11,200 or maybe even 11,000 uh, odd levels, I think it would be a good opportunity to start nimbling into quality names. Because uh, let me tell you, last time when Trump won the election, there was a knee-jerk correction you know, at that point of time and markets bounce back quite significantly. So we could see a repeat of that event happening now. And I think uh, it would be a very good, uh, you know, way to actually strategically build a good portfolio of good quality stock when the market corrects. So it's going to be a wait and watch, but yes, definitely one should not miss out the opportunity to look at good quality companies, you know, in a downturn. And we'll touch back with you once again, once that happens and we'll get those names from you. Thanks so much, Avinash, for joining me this morning and for taking your time. Uh, well, dear viewer, it's going to be an interesting week to say the least. So do stay tuned. We'll bring you all the updates right here on Bloomberg Quint.